Great Cheese Squeeze by Brian Bollinger and Keith Lingo. Oh, yeah. Moral of the story is even when everything goes wrong, in the end, it might turn out right. Standing tall and proud on the prey was a lighthouse, home of Mr. Gunthrie Fromage and Reverend Igneous P. Bumblesmog. These two friends took pride in their job. Well done, for no ship has ever crashed there. When they weren't busy at the lighthouse, Grunty and Iggy liked to keep busy. Gunthry would tinker away in his workshop and make sculptures of his favorite subject, toes. He was so fond <coughs> of toes that he wished to share his love with bumpy piggy digits through his art. So he carved stubby masterpieces out of cheese, knowing that there was no finer material than cheese for crafting such irresistible wiggles. Likewise, Iggy, a country preacher, enjoyed creating wind chimes from buggy bits, dragonfly wings, beetle feet, grasshopper legs, and such, all collected from his diner leftovers, filled his hobby room. He was a frugal frog who saw a new wind chime and everything creepy and crawly. Together, Guntry and Iggy would sell their crafts in Lighthouse gift shop for many tourists come to see only Lighthouse on the prairie. One day, two friends were enjoying a meal with some fellowship. Country was horking down his favorite food, cheese-filled hot dogs. And reading a magazine, Iggy was preparing some dragonfly tea and thorax nibblers. What you reading, Country? he asked. Oh, I'm just looking over the issue of Cheese Digest for ideas. The Prairie Cheese Carvers contest is coming up. Just then, Grunty noticed a hint of strange smell wafting through the kitchen. Guthrie wrinkled his nose, wondering where the stinkiness was coming from. Are you going to ev Are you going to enter one of your cheddar toes in the contest? asked Iggy. Guthrie was distracted from his sniffing by Iggy's question. Oh, oh well, I want to try something unique. Everybody carves with mozzarella or gorgonzola, but I don't like to really wow this year. Oh, mumbled Iggy, wondering what gorgonzola was anyway. Well, if you need a heart hand, let me know, Iggy said aloud. No one's ever got a demist, got a demist, Grunthry. Grunthry returned to reading and turned the page, looking for cheesy ideas, but without knowing it, he knocked the cheese dog into Iggy's chair when Iggy was ready to enjoy his meal. He sat down right on a cheese dog, which made a horrifying spadoosh. The sound immediately... Iggy vaulted out of his chair, hitting his head on the ceiling. Left smushed into his chair was a very, very flat hot dog, which obviously had been no match for his bottom. An upset Iggy left the kitchen. He was still sore from sitting on the hot cheese scuffle the night before, and now this, he hated sitting on the floor. He always had. Gunther gave the spatula to scrape off the hot dog off Iggy's chair when he stopped. Where was the cheese? When Iggy sat on the cheese dog, the cheese must have squirted out, pulling it off the fridge. Gunther knows the cheese felt like clay. He mushed it around in a plate. He shouted, Eureka! I found the perfect cheese. Gunther rushed upstairs with excitement in his heart and a load of cheese dogs in his arms. All night he fastened and hammered, glued, and screwed till his weary eyes drooped into slumber. Iggy worked on wind chimes down in his room as he glued the bee wing to a centipede. His nostrils began to twitch. What was that unspeakable stench? Why, I believe, it's coming from my socks. Iggy loved to wear woolen socks to keep his flippery feet warm as he trod through bogs looking for buggy bites. But he often forgot to wear shoes, and he hadn't changed his socks for weeks. So Iggy's stockings turned sour, stinking beyond the ability of even a frog to endure. And that's really something, since frogs are rather poor sniffers. Even his wind chimes were shivering under the blistering reek of those rotting socks. Unfortunately, Iggy had a most clever plan. He quickly doffed his socks, put them, put them in the rest of his overripe laundry into a container, crammed the whole thing into the freezer. Surely frozen clothes when it smell is bad. Boy, said Iggy, 
we're gonna have to buy another freezer. This one's pretty stuffed. Then try it off the bed. The next morning, Iggy was eager for another bug hunt, but when he opened his socks drawer, he found that it was empty. How come his venture forth? How could he venture forth in the dew? Was allowed to run freely over his webby digits. Frantic, he felt around in the back of the drawer with his tongue. All he found was a dust bunny and an old cobweb, neither of which were socks. Nor did they taste very well after washing his tongue under this faucet. Iggy went to ask Gunthry if he could borrow a pair of socks. Sound asleep in his workshop, Gunthry was reading next to a very particular machine. What in the world is that? thought Iggy. Then his eyes caught a pile of sad-looking squash cheese dogs. <laughs> <laughs> what evil has done these Franks? cried Iggy. Soon the sound of Iggy firstly trying to inflict the hot dogs with a bicycle will grunty. Stop, stop, cried Guthrie. I flattened those further furthers on purpose. Iggy blinked at Grunty, amazed. This is my new cheesy distraction confrontation. It squeezes the cheese right out of the cheese dogs. That way I can use it for sculpting. I call it the de-cheesinator, offered Grunty. <laughs> oh, said Grunty. Oh, said Iggy. Scratching his head. Now I understand, though he really didn't understand at all. I need to get some more sleep, young Grunty. As he laid back down, soon he was dreaming of running a whole case of cheese treaders through the de-cheesinator. Iggy was left to ponder his sock stumper just then. In the morning, clouds parted to reveal a shaft of sunlight. Bright and warm, as the light spilled through the window, it nested upon Grunty's machine. <coughs> Suddenly, Iggy had a thought. Grunty's machine can take the cheese out of cheese dogs. Maybe it can take the stink out of my socks. He hopped out of the kitchen. He quickly defrosted all of his socks in the microwave. Pew! Did it stink? Even after frumping them back up to Gunthy's room, he slopped the drippy, droopy socks into Gunthy's machine and threw a switch and stood. Back soon, the clank and slurp of the world's only deep cheese and eater echoed across the prairie. The socks came out smelling half as bad, so he ran them through a few more times until they only faintly stunk. Then he neatly folded his freshly squeezed socks and carried them off. He was looking forward to his bug hunt. That afternoon, Guthrie finally woke, dazed. With excitement, hauling out the cheese dogs, he dumped them into the machine. After turning it, he left for breakfast. He returned to find a very nice heap of freshly squeezed cheese dogs. But suddenly, his whiskers started to wilt, for the cheese smelled horribly foul. Guthrie realized something. There's only one smell that makes my throat burn and my tummy turn like this. That's when Grunty noticed something in the bin that did not belong. One of Iggy's socks. Igneous P. Bumble Smog, he screamed suddenly as he ran from his workshop. He bursted into the kitchen. There was Iggy scumbling his webby, webbings between his toes with a toothbrush. Did you force feed socks through my de-cheesinator? cried Guthrie. Um, maybe. I mean... Well, I kind of figured it was the thing to do. It, was re it really took the stink out of them, too, he nodded. Well, most of it. Well, some of it, anyway. Guthrie was shaking with fury. Do you realize what you've done? Now all my cheese smells like your stinky feet. <coughs> Iggy cowered behind a chair as Guthrie continued. How will it look when I put my cheese toes in the competition and they, they smell? Like feet. Guthrie stopped. Wait a minute, he exclaimed. I have an idea. Think about it. Cheese toes. They actually smell like real feet. Amazed, Iggy looked up smiling, happy. Guthrie, I bet that all the other carvings in the contest will smell just like plain old cheese. That's certainly not very interesting, dated Guthrie. No, I don't suppose it smelled. No, I don't suppose it smiled or quite revealed Iggy. So Guthrie went ahead and sculpted those stinky cheese toes and put them in the contest, and they won the most original ribbon for the prairie cheese carvers. 
After the contest, Grunty turned to Iggy and said, And to think, if it hadn't been for you and your stinky socks, I would have never won. Iggy smiled. And if it hadn't been for your de-cheesener, we wouldn't have to buy a new freezer. In the end, Guthrie's Stinky Cheese Toe Scarvings ended up touring several art galleries with food ventilation, of course. Folks came from all around to catch a whiff of them, even in the Lighthouse gift shop. Guthrie's, Guthrie's Stink Cheese Toe Sculpture sold briskly, along with plenty of Iggy's further jerky made from the de-cheesenated Franks. Guthrie and Iggy were happy to learn that two friends working together really are better than one. And from the day on, Guthrie let Iggy run his socks, but not underwear, through the de-cheesing meter, anytime he wanted. Three minutes on the block.